What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in on another episode of Non-Applicable Podcast. Uh, this is our fantasy bookings and rumor episode for uh, WWE. I'm Chubbs. I'm One Take. Find us Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, na.podcast919. Uh, while you're here, like, share, and subscribe to this video and other stuff. Yeah. Uh, we don't have much for you. For rumors today. No. Um, I mean, I can make some up. I mean, that's yeah, that's what a rumor is. So, yeah. I mean, uh, some of them technically have some like <laughs> insider information, yeah. right? Um, I I I got not well. The only thing this isn't really a rumor, so sorry. Uh, rumors and or information. <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of stuff on the Hardys and the Broken gimmick. And all of it has been leaning towards that not happening. It's going to. Now, before the Hardys returned at WrestleMania, there was a whole lot of news about it not happening. Right. And then it happened. Right. So, I'm leaning on the side of, since we're hearing a lot of stuff about it not happening. Well, I'm also going to say this, too. This is probably the information that you did hear that I also heard from what Ed no, don't, whatever the dude's name is. Yeah. Dude's an idiot. I can tell based on just the stuff he said. Like, he basically took what was said to him and made it fit his narrative opposed to it actually. Like, he said, oh, WWE doesn't even want the gimmick. WWE said that they don't want to pay to lease it. Right. They want it. Right. And they're not going to go out and out of their way to you know, be doing all this extra cur- curricular BS that isn't needed. Yeah. They didn't say, oh, we don't want it. They just said, we don't want to do this. Right. And he was just like, oh, they don't want it. <laughs> the, the other bad part for me is that when I'm scrolling, like, I follow a few pages on Facebook that right. put out some pretty decent stories, but then Facebook also has, like, the recommended. And since these are stories that I'm looking at, I'll get a recommended story of something about the Hardys. Right. And the headline is like, oh, it's not happening or whatever. But then you open it and it's dated four months ago. Right. Because Facebook's algorithm for deciding what's recommended One, information yeah. is a little bit off. As the, the, the dude, I know his name, like we just said it, Ed, I, I know his last name, but I can see it in my head, but my mouth is just like, I'm not like going to say Nord, it right. Nordstrom or something Nordstrom, like yeah, something like that. But either way, he's he's not doing a good job of making himself appear credible, and he's literally just making Impact look like idiots. Yeah. Because A, he's doing stuff that, I get his point behind it, but he's being completely unprofessional. Not saying that, like, Rebby's not, but she's also, she's not on her contract. She can say and do whatever the hell and she wants. pregnant and irrational. Yeah, and she's also from New York. I don't know this for a fact. I'm guessing from the way she speaks when she's not speaking Spanish, she's from New York. I don't know that for a fact, but if she is a New York Latina, kind of ex- 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 can explain a, a right. lot. Not trying to paint a broad brush, but come on, people. We know. We know. Um, but she's not under contract with, with anyone, so she can say and do whatever she wants that she deems to be defensive of her, her husband, and her family, and her money. Right. Not saying that, that, you know, excuses the stuff that she says, but she can do whatever the hell she wants. This Ed dude, I don't know if you heard or not, he actually released pictures to pro wrestling insiders, I believe it was. He released pictures of Matt Hardy's contract, which is like a no-no. Yeah. Because wrestling contracts for a reason are because, A, no one's is the same. And even though people should be adults, they're not going to be. If you see somebody you think you're doing better than is getting more royalty percentage or this and that, there's going to be hostility about it. The thing is, is it just has Matt Hardy's name on it. No signature, just his name. It's just typed out. So it literally could have just been a contract that he made up. (laughs) and put Johnny on the spot. Yeah. Or it could have been one they had that the Hardys didn't sign. Right. Or Matt didn't sign because... Matt and Jeff, if I remember, and Rebby have all said that the contracts that they, the last contracts that they signed with TNA weren't 
typical uh, wrestling contracts or performance contracts. The incentives were different. The wording was different. Mm-hmm. The way things worked throughout was different. And like, like most um, wrestling contracts have a thing where if we put it on TV for you, no matter if you're the one that pro- no matter if you're the one that paid for it, we put it on TV for you. It's our intellectual property. Yeah. And that's also in TNA's contracts and Impact's contracts. But what Matt and Rebby are trying to say, and Jeff sort sort of, he's kind of staying back from it because he just doesn't. I don't think he wants to be in the BS of it. He's more matter of fact, and if people ask him a question, he goes, "Yeah, pretty much." <laughs> he just wants to wrestle. Yeah. But either way, Matt and Rebby both say that you know the contracts that they signed with Impact and TNA, the last one, it wasn't a typical one. It didn't have that. They had a lot more freedom in their contract, and that's why they signed it, especially creative freedom. And I also find it funny, I was telling you earlier that I, I did a refresher watch of the Broken Universe. Mm-hmm. I find it funny that some of the videos in their timeline, they trademarked Brother Nero, they trademarked Broken Matt, and they trademarked something else. But it's not consistently trademarked, even the videos that are in succession date-wise. <clears throat> Makes sense. Right? So, so dumb. And did, I don't know if we said in one of our other ones, other shows when we were talking about it, but supposedly it was a, a ploy by WWE having, I don't know if people heard it or not, that they asked TNA or Impact Anthem to you know, give them the paperwork that showed they had the rights for the broken universe that way they could work out a settlement right supposedly the thought behind that was wwe's thought process was is that means if they don't have the trademarks either way they're going to have to go through the the copyright trademark company yeah uh court whatever the hell you want to call it and they can go you don't have the rights for it we're not we can't give you paperwork for something that you don't have the rights for wwe can go ha 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 we don't know you crap it's ours now or yeah. it's, it's Matt's now, and we're buying it off from him, whatever the case may be. And if they did have it, then you go, okay, you have it. We're giving you this lump sum, and it's ours now. Yeah. But I guess the sticking point has basically been with Impact is that they want to lease it to WWE, and they want royalties continuing. And WWE is like, you can have royalties from everything that happened in TNA and Impact, and obviously the royalties from what you sell from the stuff in Impact, but once it's ours and we're doing an art show, it's ours and we're not. We'll give you money to have it be ours, but that's it. We're not giving you royalties. Yeah. It's not like WWE wants to start selling broken uh, merchandise and then have to cut a percentage of that to Impact. Because Impact. the money <clears throat> that they would make on the merchandise would be enough to pay the lump sum in right. like a day. <laughs> and also think think about it this way, is if if they end up doing do get the agreement or what however it goes, we'll just say for the sake of argument that Impact does have the rights. WWE buys it from them. You're probably gonna have. I'm not gonna say a large amount, but you're gonna have probably a good amount of people that are gonna be like, huh? I wonder what the origins of this were. Obviously, we we've heard that it's an Impact. I'm gonna, right. I'm going to go look for it. So, A, that's going to give their, their YouTube, their website traffic, DVD sales. Like, I want it, but I also don't want to put money to Impact because their show is awful. Right. Like, if they had a way where it was literally just Matt and Jeff could sell it, and I could buy it and give them money only, mm-hmm. or even WWE, as much as I don't want to give them money either, I would, but I'm not giving money to Impact. Um, I also I had more to that, but I don't remember. There's another thing. I don't know if we talked about it last week. So Adam Cole's contract with Ring of Honor is done. Yeah, he we've said that it's been done. For yeah, me. he hasn't signed anywhere yet. Right. Still. Correct. Uh, the thought process is, and plus he's not taking any independent dates. Last I heard, he wasn't taking any independent dates. He just had one. Where? I don't remember. I saw it though. He he, he won. Actually, it might have been a Ring of Honor one. Either he went. He had a match with Cody Rhodes like two days ago. Hmm. 
then I don't. Then I don't know. I was. Then never Sonic. mind. Sonic. Yeah, I think it was, it was Friday. It could have been Ring of Honor because he's still doing stuff with Ring of Honor and get it. PWG match. Actually, that was the week, the Friday, uh, leading into the weekend for um, Backlash and Takeover. So that was last week. Okay. Then I stand corrected. Scratch that from the record. Um, <laughs> well, that's all I got. Well, no. He. Either way, you're on. You're on the right track. Is he is still doing some indie indie stuff? And he's, he's uh, finishing up. Yeah. Previous things. Right, but he he's, so not, he's not accepting. He's not taking new, more. Yeah, he's not accepting new independent gigs, like um, Bobby Fish is accepting new independent gigs. Or even Leo Rush. Leo Rush. Actually, he could be finishing his up. I just I know on his is like his Instagram and Twitter, he has the whole thing of. So there's the thought that that Adam Cole is going to sign with NXT WWE to go to NXT, unless Impact offers him so much money that he's can't turn it down but i don't think they will a i don't think they can because if they did it's their, all their money would be going to him yeah and b like he's still he's 27 he's gonna be 28 soon it's it wouldn't it wouldn't be like he's at a point in his career where he either stays where he's at because he's he's known and he can keep doing what he's doing or he goes to he technically signs with New Japan where he still gets to work with Ring of Honor right and still work with you know all the other people of New Japan and Ring of Honor or he goes to WWE yeah the only reason i could see him not going to WWE is because he'd want to do more with um like Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks and Marty and also still be able to do PWG yeah but I also feel like with him being at 27, he's still young enough, and the way he wrestles, since he doesn't do a lot of high flying and stuff like that, he can have a lengthy career. But I just feel like he's at a point in his career right now, A, he's a popular free agent, so he's going to he's gonna be offered quite a bit of money. Yeah. He's wanted to go to WWE. That's been his end game. Right. Like, I heard that from, from his mouth uh when he first joined um, the, well, I don't say joined because they had it for a while. When he first started doing more of the videos with uh, the Young Bucks and Kenny, and then when Cody joined them, they used to do, they tried to do it like, I think it was like once a week or once a month or something. They'd do a, a live uh, Periscope video, and they'd answer questions. One of the questions somebody asked him is, I don't remember how they worded it, but he basically, or how the question was worded, but he worded it as, I'm going to go wherever the money takes me, basically. He's like, I'm getting to the point in my career where people are going to know who I am. It's already getting up there, and by the end of what I'm doing now, everyone's going to know who I am mm -hmm. in the wrestling world. So he's like, if WWE's got that big paycheck, I'm signing it. <laughs> right. And he's been saying for months, even before his contract was up, that because people were asking, "Hey, your contract's coming up. What do you think?" He's been talking a lot about NXT, and some people can say it as, "Oh, he's only saying that because he, he knows WWE would probably want him to go to NXT, so he's trying to sell it as he's acceptable of it." But I honestly feel like he wants to go to NXT, sort of like Nakamura wanted to go to NXT. Yeah. Finn Balor could have went either way, but he was glad he went to NXT because it was a great experience overall. Right. So I just, I don't see it being, I digress, I don't see it being smart for him to even, even if the money is astronomically retarded, I don't see it being a smart thing for him to go to Impact. Even if they gave him full and complete creative freedom, I don't see that being enough because they're not going to improve him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like he can go to TNA. Not only will it improve his name and brand and make him known more. NXT. Wait, what did I say? You said TNA. My bad, because that's what I was thinking. I meant NXT. So if he goes to NXT, not only will it further his brand and his name, because you have some people that only watch WWE and they refuse to watch the other companies. Mm -mm. Not as much as it used to be. Um, and the same with, like, 
Impact. Oh, there's hell with WWE. They're awful. Impact's great. No, it's not, by the way. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. Um, like it's, it's just not smart, in my opinion, for his career to even think about TNA when you could go to... I say WWE because I want to see him there because it's easier for me to be able to see him if he's on WWE instead of having to watch him on YouTube or Ring of Honor when the way they do their taping, so you'll see him like once a month or twice a month opposed to like... Right. Well, they do that in NXT too. You probably see him every other week or maybe every week when he first gets down there. But WWE and New Japan separately, obviously, could do way more for him than Impact, besides a paycheck, would be able to do. Yeah. For his brand, for improving him. Like, he, he, he can go to... I say more so with NXT because I believe this to be true. Especially since he's already wrestled for New Japan. or Yeah, not for, but in New Japan. Going to NXT, I feel like he could further his skills. Like, he'll get better at so many more things that he could add to his repertoire opposed to if he signs with New Japan, he's just furthering what he's already doing. I mean, he can learn some more you know, stuff from New Japan because they're a little bit more gritty than Ring of Honor. But I feel like he can get that grittiness in, in NXT because they're kind of gritty, for especially for WWE. Yeah. Sorry, I'm overtaking the talking right now. I'm tired. You know how I'm tired? I ramble more than normal. It's okay. Um, can I always cut you off? You cut off. No. Um, okay. Also, speaking of New Japan, their uh, American tour, tour uh, July 2nd? I think so, yeah. It's, it's being advertised as being on Access TV. I don't know where that is or if we even have it, but it's just AXS. Yeah, no, TV. I've, I've heard of it. I'm trying to remember. So if anybody has Access TV, uh, and also JR is going to be doing the commentary for it. Really cool. Yeah, I, I want to um, be able to watch that. This, is that the one that's in Long Beach? Or in California, either way? Yeah. Because that's where, isn't that, that's where New Japan's original, either original or at least original American dojo started was yeah. in California. I think it's in California. But I, I want to find a way to uh, to check that out. Yeah, you probably, I mean, obviously you could from their website, but with it being the U.S. one, they might make it free. We'll, try, we'll have to keep an eye on it because I know they had one of the, they had one of the things with Osprey that, ended up being free. Yeah. Um, I don't remember when, but I saw things saying it was free, but I didn't go and check it out because I didn't feel like switching my inputs to my PC and having to <laughs> go to the website and find it. And right. Yeah, I'd rather just have it be right there on the TV. Yeah, that's why I'm kind of hoping that New Japan either get popular enough where they either make an app or... Do something instead of making it a website, which I don't know. I like. I don't know if that's easier in Japan, but here it's not. Right. I don't know why they wouldn't want to just. I feel like it would be very easy for them to get a contract with an American television station. Yeah, like. So is is do you, um, probably neither of us know this. Is Impact going to be going to Spike? Like, we know that they've been talking about it. I have no idea. I How say that because keep them on pop. Yeah. Because nobody cares. Put New Japan on Spike. Yeah. That'd be great. Or put New Japan on, like, sci-fi. sci-fi. Yeah. That, that actually would be fitting for some of their weird stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But if anybody out there has Access TV, uh, look for that. It also could just be, like, a California network channel or something like that maybe i know i know of it i'm just spacing out right now i had never heard of it uh so i don't know i don't really have anything else so well, we can mojo move on to our our booking our fantasy booking yeah I, uh, i'm trying to think of oh i saw another thing about uh, cody rhodes where he reiterated that he hasn't agreed to sign a, a contract for a home right he's still wandering willing Willy I nilly. thought your point last week of him uh, not being on impact made sense of him probably signing a contract. Oh, I don't remember. 
was so long ago. <laughs> well, yeah, so you, you were just saying that obviously he, he was doing Ring of Honor, New Japan, other indie stuff, and he was on Impact, but it's all of a sudden he wasn't on Impact, so it made sense that he was probably had signed a contract with somebody that wasn't Impact. Right, or he just wasn't a fan of what Impact had him do. I think that I think the Impact thing, like I don't know if you know or not, but Cody, since he left WWE, has had a bucket list. It could have been on his bucket list or his new extended bucket list because he pretty much finished his first bucket list in like the first couple of months out of WWE. Yeah. It was crazy, some of the stuff he wanted to do that he got to do. Seeing how good he is now, I'm really mad at WWE for... Keeping him at Stardust as long as they yeah. did? Yeah. Or even making him Stardust in the first place. He didn't really care for it either. The only thing that I've heard from him that he appreciated appreciated out of it is when he got the tag team with Goldust, and obviously since they're brothers, there's enough of an age gap between them where they didn't grow up together. And he, right. he just, obviously they knew they were brothers, and then obviously... Dusty and Dustin were estranged for a while. Yeah. So th- he didn't get to see him. So WWE making them a tag team, he got to spend some quality time with his brother and actually really, really enjoyed it. So I will say that's good, but no, I agree with you. Yeah. They left him as Stardust for way too long, especially knowing that before he was Stardust, like remember when he broke his nose and he, had, he was like Pretty Cody or whatever the hell yeah. his name was? And he used to come out and just berate the audience on how ugly they were. Even when he had his mask on, he'd make people, his broken nose mask, he'd make people wear paper bags and stuff like that. Yeah. How do you not know that's gold? Like, that's perfect, like, that's legit, you're going to get heel heat for that. That's what Vince wants. Yeah. I just punched my mic, sorry. Yeah. Um, well, no, he's, he's, he's great as himself. Definitely. I, I saw another interview with him on... It's, it, it was on it was on YouTube with a, uh, technically their music, uh, blog vlog or whatever, but they also like interview like pop culture and stuff like that. So they did one with, like the Young Bucks was just last week. They did one with Kenny Omega a couple of weeks ago, Cody Rhodes, Will Ospreay, and Cody kind of base he said he's had some some things that he's worked on where if he ever goes back to WWE, there's some this has to happen and there's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. And one of the things is his music does not get changed because the music he has right now is the music he wants. Um, but just the way he worded it, it made it sound like he knows he's going back to WWE eventually. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. I think he wanted this time, A, to get away from WWE, get away from Stardust be able to do something he wanted to do, you know, spread his wings. Yeah. The problem is that WWE, most of it an extra W, the talent pool is so large that it just, there's just too many. That That's why I'm not bothered by the, the brand split. It helps with that. Even it, though stuff can get stale a little bit quicker. Right. They could still find a way to organically do invasions of each other's show and, like, change some stuff without having to be, like, a draft or a trade. The only problem is that when they would... It was two picks to one during the first draft. Raw got two picks for every one that SmackDown got. Yeah. So, your Raw roster is... Still big. Still big, whereas the SmackDown roster is not as big. Right. And if you had just split it 50-50, it would have been, would have been even better. Yeah. I think they might have also the thought process if they got guys from NXT that are more so going to be coming up to SmackDown. Even though Vince wants them on Raw. Like, like Shinsuke, Triple H wanted on SmackDown from the get-go, and Vince wanted him on Raw. Luckily, he ended up going to SmackDown. Yeah. He fits better on SmackDown. I say that also based on roster. Right. Some more matches on SmackDown I want to see him involved in. I just... I'm not a fan of the brand split. I just think what they should do is have Raw for the major storylines and then have SmackDown be... like To further some of the storylines and start some new ones? Yeah, like the have mid-card the Have mid-card it be your experimental lines. show? Huh? Have it be your experimental show? Yeah. Have, like, the mid-card storylines be on SmackDown and 
you can use the backstage moments to further the main storylines. Right. And then Raw is the main storylines. And I don't no, know. I just, there's a better no, I, way I, to do it. I, I get what you're saying, and I agree with that. But I don't mind this bl- the bland, the brand split just because I feel like if it wasn't a brand split, I'd be more bored by Tuesday night. Like, at least I know when I'm tuning in Tuesday, I'm going to see different wrestlers and different storylines right. that aren't connected to the show I just watched the night before. Right. So it's more of a refresher. Yeah. I still... I'm going to say it till it happens. Women's division should be on one show. E- even though I, I agree, agree with that, and I get SmackDown's reasoning for, like, doing it the way they're doing it right now, because they want to have all the women shown on TV to show them as important. Right. It doesn't work for me. Like, it doesn't make them important by making them all on TV all at the same time. To me, that just makes me say that you're trying to cover up stuff because, you know, most of them kind of suck. So you're trying to put them with the ones that are good and jam a whole storyline together. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. That, um, that's why I wasn't overly annoyed with how Raw had um, Sasha versus Alicia Fox because my thought process was... It's better for them to try something that doesn't make sense and accidentally strike gold than not have Sasha doing anything and not on TV at all. Right. So that's why I was okay with it, even if it was kind of like, what? What are you? What, why is this happening? <laughs> yeah. And I think Emma's supposed to be coming back again soon. Yeah. So that'll hopefully I help. I haven't heard too, too much. I know she's rehabbing. Um, so... Fantasy booking. Kofi should be back soon, too. Yeah, there was a whole bunch of... Like, I was on Facebook, and there was a whole bunch of uh, posts about, you know, tag team returning to SmackDown. It would, it said, quote, tonight. And it was from... all Like, even yesterday, it's in my news feed from May 23rd. Yeah. But they... And it was New Day, but they didn't return. Technically, they did. They did? They were on Talking Smack. Oh, that's probably what they meant by it. Yeah. So maybe they'll be there next week. Well, I know Kofi's been at the uh, Performance Center uh, rehabbing. And obviously he hasn't had his walking boot for a couple weeks now. He was in, what, what are those things called? The You know, the treadmills that have those, uh, like, anti-gravity chambers around them? Okay. That ha- You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Those, like, big bubbles that help take weight... He's been doing running on those, and he was at where he was at 75% of his body weight. And he said that he, he's one of the guys that he's always been against running, not just because it's labor-intensive, but also because it bores him to death and he hates it. And he said this is the first time he could say that he was, like, full of energy and excited after getting off a treadmill because, you know, he felt good and was glad that he was progressing. And that was two weeks ago, I think. Yeah, I, I agree about running. Oh, it sucks. <laughs> I played sports my whole whole life up until a few years ago when I just couldn't anymore. And just, unless I was running playing the sport, which I like doing, just yeah. running to run for exercise is one of the most obnoxiously dull things. Yeah, I don't really want to run unless something's chasing me. I don't even then. Get- so, we'll just jump right into our fantasy booking of... DIY. Take three. Take three. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, they break up, as we know, and they have their feud. Gargano goes over on, I mean, Champa goes over on Gargano in the beginning, in the end. It's the other way around. Champa realizes the error of his ways. He apologizes. They shake hands. They part ways as single competitors and no longer foes. Cut to main roster. The Young Bucks have been on there. They've signed with WWE. It's just a rumor. It didn't really happen. In case you just fast forward. Fantasy booking. Heard that part. Uh, They're running through the tag team division, taking out everybody. Get to WrestleMania. They say, you know, we don't have any opponents. We took everybody out. What have you. We're the best. There's nobody left to fight. What are we even doing here? And then DIY's music hits. They come out as a team, have an epic match at WrestleMania for the purpose of anything DIY would win, but I don't really care who wins either way. 
You know, the other good thing about and I wasn't think well, I was thinking of, but you having uh, the Young Bucks that way is them coming to WWE. They could totally play into their heel portion of you know we came to WWE for this, like literally play play it where it's a mock them mocking it like. Pfft. We were doing better on the indies. At least we had competition there. Yeah. So that would that would be pretty good. That's um, it for me. Huh? That's it for me. <laughs> yeah. Since this is our third go around, we're less gustoed, so it's going to be quick because we're annoyed. <laughs> um, mine is somewhat similar uh, as far as uh, DIY saying they don't have any competition, but I'm doing it differently as I'm going to add some what possibly could happen, whether or not it's what I want or not. So, DIY is broken up, like we already know. The rumor's been that one of the reasons they were broken up, not only are they going to have their own feud, is that they were both, or at least Johnny, at a minimum, was going to be going to 205 Live. So, as much as we don't want that to happen just because 205 Live is played the way it is, it could be a really good show if they did it properly. Um... It's not necessarily part of my fantasy, but booking, but we'll add it in just because it could be a reality. So, cut to, they have their uh, matches in NXT, and that doesn't really, like, they have good matches, and then so then they're like, you know what, we're done, we don't even need to deal with each other, let's go our separate ways, this is pointless. Cut to, they go to 205 Live, where uh, some interaction happens between them, where they end up uh, having like a, a longer feud whole bunch of matches that start out with same, similar to what Chubb said where uh, Tomasa comes out on top for the first couple and then uh, Johnny starts getting some steam behind him and he starts winning them and then their last match ends at eh, whatever pay per view doesn't really matter Royal Rumble anywhere I don't really care <laughs> um and at, at the end, basically, they in the middle of the ring, Tomasa gets a mic and says, you know what, I was the one that, you know, said that I was the reason DIY was, was what it was and you were nothing. You, you earned my respect throughout this and my apologies. And they basically just, you know, shake hands, go their separate ways. Cut to back to 205 Live. They're both having their individual matches for, you know, whatever. <clears throat> um, and Johnny's in a match with, we'll say, Jack Gallagher for a number one contendership. And um, during the match, he's kind of he's kind of getting worked pretty good. And T- Tomasa comes out and goes to get in the ring. And Johnny meets him and is like, what are you doing? He's like, dude, I'm just trying to help you. He's like, I don't need your help. And, like, he gets in the ring, and they're, like, face-to-face, and they're just yelling at each other. I'm just trying to help. And Johnny's just like, I don't need your help. You know, you're the one that wanted us to break apart from what we had going, so go. And they're just staring at each other and look like they're going to go head-to-head, and then they both turn and take out Jack Gallagher. Turns them heels. They end up becoming tag team again. Then you cut to, they just run through the tag division and 205 Live. They're just beating up everyone, taking names, and then they end up becoming the tag team champions, and they are for a while, and then cut to WrestleMania. Similar to what Chubb said, they're like, ah, we've just beaten up everyone. There's, like, nobody that we could face. It's no point. Technically, you could say they could bring up Authors of Pain, and Authors of Pain could beat them, but we're not doing this. It's my fantasy. I do what I want. Um... All right, so then we pause there at WrestleMania. Um, during their whole uh, comeback tour, I guess you could say, um, during that whole time, when they're doing promos, they drop like these subtle hints about, you know, being the best, you know, tag teams. No one can beat them. And then randomly these vignettes, video packages just start popping up and nobody knows what the hell it is. Like the music, you don't know what it is. Some words like there's a, a cleansing coming to WWE. Then the next week there's a cleansing coming to the tag team division. Um, 
you will be cleansed. And it's all words. There's no voices, just, you know, ominous music. Dark and ominous tones. Um, and everyone just doesn't know what it is. Like, you don't know what it's leading to. It, there's no, like, it doesn't make any sense. It makes sense that something's happening, but nobody knows who or what it is. And then you cut to um, more of those happening all the way building up to WrestleMania. Um, where the last one, it's your cleansing is upon you. And the words kind of disappear and like two wings appear. And they kind of like, uh, I don't want to use the word flutter, but they kind of like, uh, you know, appear and disappear type fluttering. Not flapping, <laughs> fluttering. And then that's the, the week before WrestleMania. All right, we unpause. We cut back to WrestleMania. Johnny and Tomasa in the ring. As you know, we beat up everyone with the tag champs. We don't even have a match because we've literally beat everyone up and it's not worth our time. Har, 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 har. Cut to that last vignette that we saw at the go-home show leading to WrestleMania of the cleansing is coming or whatever the hell I said. I already forgot. And the wings and stuff. And then you cut to actual music. And people are like, well, that kind of sounds familiar. Young Bucks come out. Huge pop, obviously, because it's the Young Bucks. And then... Huge pap. Huge pap. I had to say that weird. Um, they come down to the ring. They grab the mics and go, well, you know, we are the elite. We're the best tag team champions in the world. Blah, blah, blah. You guys are saying you're this and that. But we didn't come alone. Cut to the end of the vignette with the wings. And as they're f fluttering, one of them disappears. And it's just one wing. Which, if you don't get that reference, I'm not explaining it. You're going to have to figure it out. Even though I'm going to tell you who it's for. It's Kenny Omega. He comes out. And so you have the the Elite versus DIY. And DIY's like, you know, just because we said we beat up everyone, three on two is not fair. And this is where I change. I have two scenarios. One, you have a person that through this whole time has already been in NXT building their, their brand up for WWE. His music hits and everyone knows it when it hits because, like I said, he was in NXT through this whole time doing his build up. And this is his debut. Um, and in a NXT, he was a heel, which obviously helps him align with uh, my working of DIY being a heel tag team. But the music hits and it's Adam Cole, baby! He comes down, they have a 3-on-3 three -three tag match, Freebird rule it. Um, I also thought of uh, having Kevin Owens incorporated into it in place of Adam Cole because, uh, for those that don't know, he's actually friends with the Young Bucks in real life and Adam Cole, so I thought it would have been kind of cool uh, just for a mark-out reason. Um, but I didn't, so... That's all, that's all I got for that. So. All right. And that's all I had as well. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, na.podcast919. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Let us know if you have any ideas on what we've just covered or if you have any future ideas on uh, a fantasy book that you'd like to hear or what have you. Uh, yeah. you either way, interact with us. Yeah. Interact back. Deuces. Double deuces.